Hi, this is your host Sapil Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Triva Williams, Technical Community Manager at the Open Infrastructure Foundation. Triva, it's great to have you on the show. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Since this is the first time I'm talking to you, I would love to know a bit about yourself and how and why you ended up joining the Open Infra Foundation. So it's a, an odd journey, but it is, um, I guess, interesting. So I started off kind of as a tailor slash seamstress, and I wasn't very good at that. Um, and also I graduated school during the recession. So I ended up kind of having to take a job anywhere that ended up being like a call center that I turned out to be kind of good at. And then somebody recommended this company called Rackspace that I got in on the first interview at and Rackspace, at least at the time, they had this huge education initiative. So I started taking classes about this stuff called Linux. And the whole time I was reading the company emails and announcements about something called OpenStack, which kind of piqued my interest. So I started taking classes about OpenStack and also just kind of using the resources that were available to me to learn more about it. TLDR, um, I got really good at it, started teaching my teammates. My role went away. So I got a job teaching OpenStack at some um, online education company got pretty good at that. And um, also just being a huge geek about OpenStack in general. And somehow I ended up stumbling on the OpenStack.org website one day and saw that they had an opening at the foundation. And um, I guess maybe all of that nerding out that I've been doing all those years had made an impression on the folks there because I got hired. And here we are. Let's talk about Kata containers for a bit. We have covered it, you know, but it's always a good idea to to kind of remind our viewers, you know, what it is uh, all about. So talk a bit about uh, what is Kata containers and uh, what does it do? And of course, you know, uh, if you can also share some history of the project. My favorite TLDR description of Kata containers is that it is a container with a kernel in it, which is far too simplified, but it kind of gets to the point. Um, to go a little bit more into detail, what it is, is a virtual machine that runs like a container and can run on any type of um, container platform, like case in point, Kubernetes. The project was born five years ago from a combination of Intel Clip containers and Hyper Run B. And what it does is it provides the security and performance of a virtual machine with the speed of a container. One of the most incredible things about it, what sets it apart from other container runtimes is that it can run on pretty much any type of hypervisor, any type of platform. It can run standalone, it can run on Kubernetes, pretty much any environment that you need it to adapt to, it can do that. Um, when I first heard about it all those years ago, I was super excited about it. So it's pretty interesting that I ended up being community manager for it. Now, since you said, you know, that you uh, became a community manager, let's let's talk a bit about uh, your role as a community manager, if you can talk about it. And what is the community like today and how do you work with them? I consider myself to be a bit of a project manager, um, but for an open source community. So like, I don't have to worry about salaries or anything, but I see my job as taking a look at what the community, I guess, like state is at the time, what their goals are for the next two weeks, the next two months, the next six months, the next two years, and making sure that they have everything available to make sure that they get to those goals at the times that they specified, or at least close to them. And um, every once in a while, when I get the chance to try to throw in something fun. Um, so the Kata community, the state that it's in right now, we're in a fan, or they are in a fantastic place. They just released Kata Containers 3.0.0, um, and actually 3.0.1 just came out. <laughs> and um, to great success that I think I've been a community manager slash uh, dev advocate for a while now. And I think that was my first time in this position where there weren't any huge critical bugs with that first release because it was so so exquisitely planned and so exquisitely thought out for the entire development process. I am super proud of them. I tell them that all the time. They probably, I'm probably getting on their nerves, but I absolutely love them. But they're in a great place right now. Since we are talking about uh, Kata, can you also share, if possible, some examples of how it is being used in production, who are using it, and at what scale? Because when we talk about open stack scale, that's massive. Just look at what CERN and a lot of other folks are doing there. I'm so glad that you asked that question. Um, so the most remarkable use case that I can think of off the top of my head is from Ant Group slash Alibaba. They were running Kata 3.0.0 in production 
and their product under a different name called Run D for the entire development time. So they were contributing in real time to the development of 3.0.0, which is probably why it released so smoothly. Um, that is amazing. And um, they were giving presentations every week uh, or just about every week on the on um, different things that they had found, different features that they thought that that would be I guess, useful to the community at our architecture committee meetings that happen every Tuesday at 1500 UTC on Zoom, if you'd like to join. Um, <laughs> another one that is super exciting that I can talk about is Microsoft AKS integration with Kata containers. Um, that was first announced at KubeCon US back in Detroit, but that has been, or if that is being expanded, that support. Um, and as a matter of fact, I think Less than a week ago, an article was published in Forbes about that collaboration that's happening. So that is super thrilling. Um, if you happen to be at KubeCon EU, there may or may not be more announcements being made, but I mean, I'm not one to gossip, so you didn't hear that from me. Earlier, you were talking about the releases. Talk a bit about what is next for Kata containers. And you know, let's, let's talk about what is next. And then we can also talk about what kind of people should get involved and how they can get involved with the project. One of the biggest things that's going to be happening in future releases of Kata containers is the rustification of Kata. 2023 is going to be a rusty year. That is so corny, but I love saying it. <laughs> um, Kata containers that... Well, it started, I think, in the 2.5 release, which is before I got into the community. But I mean, we're not going to worry about that. That's when Kata first started expressing serious interest and started making serious moves in the rustification of Kata containers. And a major breakthrough came through with Kata 3.0. We are working with several different entities, including some universities, on further driving the rustification of Kata happening in 2023. That is super exciting. It is interesting that Kata was able to, to kind of jump on the trend of Rust becoming more popular in the open source and tech community. That may or may not have been triggered by the announcements by uh, Linus Torvald at Open Source Summit last year on adding Rust integration with the Linux kernel. So the community is right on time and they are following exactly the footsteps that they need to to make sure that they are like right on trend. And as a matter of fact, a little bit ahead of trend. Um, so to answer your second question, how to get involved with the community? I mean, dive on in. Go on over to katacontainers.io. Um, whatever you are willing to contribute, there is absolutely room and absolutely need for it. The community, in addition to being super technically adept, they are also very, very kind and they're very open and very driven to educate. Like I mentioned, we've got our university outreach program that's running right now with NDSU. I consider myself to be a little bit of a Luddite. I'm also self-taught. They are super welcoming to me. They will be welcoming to you also. If I can understand this, anyone can. Um, for starters, I would say join our Slack community. That's where the majority of like the, both tech and non-technical conversations happen. And that's also where you'll be able to find help the quickest, like kind of um, regardless of time zone. Um, another thing I would recommend is to join our AC meetings. That is where you'll get like a preview of what's coming down the pipeline and also be able to listen in on discussions on what's already happening and be able to ask questions and have them answered pretty much in real time. So I would say start there um, or just get on GitHub. Go to our GitHub repo, which is Kata Containers slash Kata Attack Containers and um, ping somebody. If you have a question, open up an issue. If you have find a bug, um, I don't know if you have a feature request, ask about it. We're always open and we're always willing to answer questions. Jiva, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, uh, share your own journey and uh, also talk about the, the container, the foundation. Thanks for sharing those insights. And I would love to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. This was a great time. I It was my pleasure. <laughs>